What goes down must come up, a sentiment as true as it is in the world of physics, as it is untrue with Bitcoin speculation. But today we're gonna to talk about palm muting and how just kind of like the direction of your stroke relates to palm muting because a lot of times I'll get questions like, you know, my downstrokes and palm muting are fine, but how do you palm mute an upstroke, okay? So we're gonna talk a little bit about that and maybe come up with some exercises that you can do to help really solidify like some good palm muting techniques in your playing. So quick refresher on palm muting, which I'll link you to another video that goes more in depth. But basically it's just a way to deaden the strings and get a totally different, really cool tone out of your guitar, whether it's an electric guitar or an acoustic guitar, all right? So basically the sound of like a sustained chord is like that, okay? Palm muting lets you kind of control the sustain of that chord and it really, deadens the sound, okay? Like even like with a electric guitar, a lot of, a lot of high gain on an electric guitar, has like a really cool, nasty kind of like uh, effect that you wanna try out. All it is is you take the side of your hand, it's not really so much the palm as it is kind of like the side of your hand, judo chop the bridge, and then now when you hit the strings, you'll have a deadened effect, okay? Sustained, muted. The amount of mute can be increased depending on how much you kind of really choke up in here. But again, a lot of questions uh, that people have are they can downstroke palm muting, but they can't really get the same effect when they're going up, okay? And that really comes down to really having the proper technique with your wrist and kind of like your thumb joint and having everything work together, okay? So if you notice, a lot of times, maybe beginner players, when they're first starting out on palm muting, they almost do it as like a percussive hit, which works, it sounds fine. You know, if you're maybe, I'm just gonna make this C major chord. A lot of what we're gonna do is this chord where it's just a C major with your ring finger on the third fret of the E string and your pinky on the third fret of the A string. So three, three, two, open, one, open. All right, so there's our chord we're gonna be working with a lot of these times. And maybe like the first palm you, you get, you might've even accidentally learned this, is just kind of have this percussive thing where you kind of come down hard with the downstroke and you're really kind of muting the strings that you're hitting on the way down. I see a lot of players kind of play like. And they really get that kind of clicky sound, which if that's what you're going for, that's really cool. But it is a little bit limiting in how you can do it. What you want to do is you want to be able to create a repeatable motion with your wrist and your thumb joint. So if you look at my, uh, my strumming hand right here, you'll notice that my thumb is kind of straight on and my wrist is locked or my arm is locked by this right here to the body of the guitar. And that's really important because it's kind of hard to palm you out in space. You want some kind of anchor point that you can work off of, all right? So I got my arm locked in here, my thumb is straight. Now, without moving my wrist, I can actually kind of just move my thumb joint like that. And a lot of times, that gives me a very repeatable stroke that for this is about two strings wide on this guitar. Again, different guitars might have different uh, width necks, stuff like that, but this usually works. And a lot of times, what you might wanna start out with doing is just palm muting power chords, okay? And you can do that a lot of time just with that joint of your thumb in collaboration with your wrist, okay? So it's something that you really kind of want to hone in on because if you're just doing the percussive thing, once you come up and off, you're getting a sustain, all right? Now, again, that can be good for some types of playing. What we're gonna focus on is coming down and then being able to mute that upstroke too, all right? It's gonna be really hard to do unless you have this anchored down here over the bridge, okay? And again, something that I did, something a lot of players do when they first start out and they're doing it kind of incorrectly in, in my estimation, is they're not actually muting enough of the strings. Maybe they're actually just kind of getting the lower three strings on the bridge and then they're actually kind of floating a little bit up like this. You really want that kind of judo chop thing to hit all the strings that you're gonna eventually strike with your pick. Otherwise, you might only mute the lower three strings and then get a sustained high end, which sometimes you might want that. Again, it's not always a bad thing, but you wanna have total control over what you're trying to play, okay? So uh, the more that you kind of eliminate the space in between your palm and all of the strings, the better that's gonna be. At first, that might be a little uncomfortable, kind of like really digging down into the bridge, but eventually, 
kind of get all of these deadened on down and up strokes. And you can see, it's really just, again, my arm is locked, the wrist is going down, and then that kind of like full down stroke is really just getting all six strings at its kind of like most extended peak, and then kind of coming back up, all right? So this movement right here is really a pretty efficient way to do it because you're not wasting any time. You can actually increase your speed a lot if you train this into your muscle memory because you're not going far beyond the strings where you have to come back up. Even that little space makes a difference when you're playing kind of like higher tempo stuff, right? So one of the things we're gonna to start to do to maybe work in as like an exercise on how to start incorporating some of this in your playing is we're gonna take these lowest four strings because we really wanna work on getting away from just muting the lower strings and kind of getting more into like this G string area right here. Where we can hit this at a downstroke or an upstroke and have it be deadened if that's what we're going for, okay? So again, in this chord, my ring finger's got the third fret of the E string, my pinky's got the third fret of the A string, my middle finger has the second fret of the D string, and the G string is just wide open, okay? Sometimes you can almost create the illusion of a palm muting effect by just muting deadened strings by releasing the pressure, okay? We're, the reason that we're using an open string in this exercise is because we don't wanna cheat and think that maybe we're accidentally palm muting when we're not just by using your fretting hand to kind of release some of the tension. It's all gonna be picking hand technique right here, all right? So this is gonna be it. We're gonna hit this chord one string at a time. We're gonna go E, A, G, D, A. So the direction of this is gonna be down, down, up, 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 okay? So it might be a little bit different if you're used to alternate picking, but I think this is kind of like a really helpful way to try to start working this into your playing. Down, down, up, up, up. E, A, G, D, A. Unmuted, it would sound like this. And then muted. Okay, so once you get that down, slower. Down, down, up, up, up. And you notice when I hit that upstroke, you can hear that muting is coming strictly from my palm right here. You can really extend this to maybe more uh, like the B string, like the E string. But it really is a good way to kind of focus in and making sure that you're getting tone, even if it is a deadened tone from all the strings and you have like total complete control over your palm meeting, all right? So we've got E, A, G, D, A, E, A, G, D, A. I'm kind of swinging it to make it a little more musical. What you can do too is you can slide it two frets higher to make kind of like a D major type thing. Okay, if you want to, you can kind of go down up to get more of like uh, all the strings in it if you want to be less precise. Again, it works in a couple different ways. Uh, just to kind of like give an example of what it would sound like if you did the more of the percussive. You can hear the accent is just where you're not muting. So again, maybe that's what you want, that's cool. But if not, you wanna be able to kind of focus on down strokes and up strokes and be able to get the same kind of tonality from really kind of anything that you wanna do. So I think this is a good kind of exercise that'll really kind of help lock your wrist or your palm or the side of your hand in the proper spot. So there's, there's a lot of different ways to do it. This is just one way that I think really helps me. And hopefully it'll kind of help you work on some of your strumming because even if you're not into muting, you don't want to incorporate palm muting into your playing as much as some other people and that's fine. It's really a good way to kind of tighten up the length of your stroke because again, you'll see, you'll notice that your speed, you know, gets a lot faster, your dynamic strumming can get a lot faster. Once you work this length of a stroke into the muscle memory, in the particular string set of your guitar. I think it's really important. So anyways, I hope that was helpful. If you guys have any questions, hit me up in the comment section, Instagram, Twitter, or the website. I'll talk to you all soon. Thanks a lot.